Ready now. Good. Juice! Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, choose content. Thanks to Page Falls Crow. Do you nut your crackles? <laughs> yeah, I do. Awesome. I nut a lot. No, no, no. Nuck. <laughs> Nuck. <laughs> and if you nut your crackles, are you raising wild crackles and are you doing it manually or do you have the machine that everybody's buying? Both. Great. Today is a Watch Mojo video. Uh, they did a video about the top 10 facts about the ISRO. I wanna, do you know about, I was just going to say something, but I don't want to spoil anything. I'm sure you've heard about it. No. Anything from Barbie that has to do with the word mojo? No. Oh, great. Then I'm not going to say it. I away from most. I'm not going to say it then. Barbie things. Okay, until good. Until. Good. I'm not going to say next it. Next week. Yeah, next week, right? <laughs> it drops next week. On the 15th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever the Tuesday is. Oh. I will be watching it with my wife. Yes. Finally. The last You'll be the last person on earth to actually see it. see Barbie. Yeah. Uh, f- fun fact, or unfun fact, the majority of people that I've heard about Barbie really enjoy Barbie. Yes. Most of the people. Yes. Uh, except for people from India. That is the one population. Not, not everybody didn't like it, well, but I've heard a lot of people just like didn't enjoy it. Is it was it because of so much of it being centered on American culture, or was it because they didn't appreciate the the rips on patriarchy? No, we're, no, I have no idea. It's just like predominantly, I've heard even from like conservative people that like don't like woke stuff, right? Uh, even though uh, I've heard that it's not actually woke, right? It isn't because it has nothing to do with yeah, black exactly. people. Because the original origins of woke have nothing to do with what people use it for um, now. But until like I've heard like. Very conservative people like loved Barbie. That had a great time at Barbie because it was just a fun movie, right? Except for, and like I said, it's not everybody that I've heard from India, but like, to, like the only people that I've heard that was like didn't enjoy Barbie have on been the whole. from India. But have, did they explain the reasons why? I didn't go into because I haven't seen it. I mean, I can't, oh, of course, I can't have a conversation. I'd with be anybody. really, I'd be really interested to know why, other than the clear disconnect you would have to a lot of things that are American referenced culture. in American culture. Maybe. Yeah, who knows? I yeah. uh, will let you know once I see it. Yes, uh, but this is a they watch Mojo. They're doing more Indian uh, videos. Top 10 facts about ISRO. Maybe there'll be some that we don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, but let's just get into this. And it's uh, the ISRO is the Idli uh, Super Regulated Organization. <laughs> it's the regulation about Idli r- regulations. <laughs> I thought it's to for I see Rick's old. Sir, we have achieved soft landing on the moon. Yeah. India is on the moon. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down. What our voice is that? 10 facts about ISRO. People are applauding. Land Let us all wait to hear. For this list, we'll be looking at the best, most interesting, and most important facts about the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. And if science and space is kind of your thing, then be sure to subscribe to our dedicated channel, Unveiled, right after this. Science and space. It started with one small step. ISRO formed on August 15th, 1969. Less than a month. Wow, I did not know that. While NASA was capturing headlines all over the world, ISRO was setting out its stall. The scientist and astronomer Vikram Sarabhai is remembered as the father of Indian space travel. He became the chairman of the Indian National Committee for Space Research. I'm already learning an enormous amount. This is great. That's not the the guy from Rocket Boys, is it? Having previously campaigned for and fronted an earlier setup. No, because Rocket Boys was the 1940s. Research. Although Sarabhai unfortunately died early in 1971, he'd built the foundations, and ISRO's first success came via satellite. India, in partnership with the Soviet Union, launched its first satellite, Aryabhata, in 1975. Fast forward to today, and ISRO runs one of the strongest satellite fleets in the world. Vikram Sarabhai's vision has been realized within a very short span of time. Number nine, small budget, big goals. Absolutely. In 2022, ISRO funding was just short of 2 billion US dollars, which sounds like a lot until you compare it to NASA, yeah. which received $24 billion in that same year. China's CNSA receives around $12 billion. The European Space Agency has around $8 billion. ISRO never gets even close to the expenditure of its rivals, and yet it still ranks as one of the most successful and influential space agencies on the planet. What the ISRO and India's space sector is most proud of 
is what they've achieved with so little. Today, that's partly thanks it's to a the wonderful thing to be proud of. Partnering with private enterprises, with the Indian government running a dedicated branch to directly link ISRO to the private sector. India's first Mars mission cost less than the film The Martian. <laughs> ISRO performing beyond its means is also backed <laughs> into its ethos. During that's its amazing. In 1968. Vikram Sarabhai conceded oh, that ISRO him. didn't have the, quote, fantasy of competing with wealthier nations. Oh, it was him. It's him from Rocket Yeah, Wars. you were, yeah. you were, yeah. Quote, a meaningful role in the application of advanced technology. I was like, I recognize that name. And yeah. Science, end quote. Number eight, trouble on the moon. Chandrayaan 1 is India's first mission to the moon launched by India's National Space Agency, the Indian Space Research Organization. For every international space agency, a journey to the moon is something of a rite of passage. But for ISRO, that journey has been far from plain sailing. The Chandrayaan program is India's primary lunar initiative. It was announced in 2003 and Chandrayaan-1 was launched in 2008. The ISRO successfully launched Chandrayaan-1 on 22nd October 2008. It was a lunar orbiter designed to move around the moon, equipped with one moon impact probe, which was successfully deployed. However, the orbiter suffered a number of technical difficulties, and although the mission had been planned for two years, it was ended after just 312 days. Next came Chandrayaan-2, which yeah. included another orbiter and rover ready to land and move on the surface. We have ignition. Launched in 2019, the orbiter worked fine, but the rover irredeemably crashed following a reported software failure. Number seven, Ooh. Lunar Redemption. After the first and second launches, there may have been some anxiety surrounding Chandrayaan-3, but ultimately, there was no need to worry. Launched in July 2023, it made a lunar orbital insertion on August 5th of that year. It again carried a probe made for the surface, but this time was able to deploy it successfully. The Pragyan rover, which translates as the Wisdom rover, successfully landed at the lunar south pole on August 23rd. It marked the first time that anyone had made a soft landing in this particular region of the moon, and was then tasked with conducting a wide range of experiments to learn more about its new home. Notably, and in honor of ISRO's founding father, Sarabhai, the vehicle that ferried the rover for both Chandrayaans 2 and 3 was named Vikram. Vikram! Number six, Mars in one. <laughs> For all the issues that ISRO may have had with the moon, there have been no such problems with Mars. In the 21st century, it seems like everyone wants to go to Mars, but ISRO is one of a tiny few that have actually managed it. The Mars Orbiter mission, otherwise known as Mangalyaan, was launched in November 2013 and began busily circling the red planet after orbital insertion on September 24th, 2014. When it arrived, it made ISRO just the fourth space agency to reach Martian orbit after Russia's Roscosmos, NASA, and the European Space Agency. The Mangalayan spacecraft entered the red planet's orbit on Wednesday after a journey of more than 10 months. What's particularly impressive, however, is that ISRO is the only one so far to achieve it on the first attempt. Mm. While everyone else has a history pitted with failed Mars missions, ISRO has a 100% success rate. The first time a, a, a space agency has managed to do it on their maiden mission, and of course also they've done it at a fraction of the cost. Number five, ISRO stares at the sun. The year 2023 will go Going down to the sun. an important one in the annals of ISRO. First Chandrayaan-3, and then Aditya L-1. ISRO is now going to launch India's first mission to understand the sun. Aditya L-1 is a solar observatory. If the mission continues as planned after launch in September 23, then it will position itself at a location in space known as the L-1 Lagrange point and intricately monitor the sun from there. The L-1 Lagrange point is an area where the gravitational influences of the sun and earth reach an equilibrium, allowing for controlled and reliable positioning. It's almost one million miles away from our planet though. The probe itself will primarily study space weather, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections. Although the sun is some 93 million miles away from us, these phenomena can have a major impact on Earth. It will be continuously observing the solar surface. Number four, ISRO is fixing fuel. No matter what, rocket fuel has been a constant puzzle for any space mission throughout history. 
In short, to get a spacecraft off the ground, you need a lot of fuel. But to carry all of that fuel, you need more fuel, and so on. One, zero, and lift off of Space Shuttle and Lance. Which is why it traditionally takes huge machines to get even a tiny payload into the sky. All space agencies are hoping to change that. In ISRO's case, the answer could lie with ISROCENE, which the Indian authorities describe as a rocket-grade version of kerosene and an alternative to conventional hydrazine rocket fuel. It's hoped that ISROCENE will be much more efficient than past iterations. Wow. Meanwhile, India is experimenting with electronic propulsion systems, with hopes that it will soon be sending up fully electric satellites. Wow. Yeah, that'd be great. Number three, ISRO will travel to hell. In the world of space travel, the roads to hell Florida? is paved with anything that can get you to Venus. The second closest planet to the sun is also widely dubbed Earth's evil twin yeah. on account of how toxic and deadly it is. Yeah. It's full of clouds that rain sulfuric acid yeah. and whip around the planet at speeds up to 224 miles per hour. Texas. Venus is hot, really hot, with surface temperatures around 900 degrees Fahrenheit or 475 Lame. degrees Go to Mercury. Celsius. <laughs> largely thanks to a dramatically runaway greenhouse effect. And yet, India wants to pay it a visit. Venus is so inhospitable, neither humans nor spacecraft are able to survive the planet's surface. The Venus Orbiter mission, otherwise known as Shukrayan, is a planned four-year exploration set to launch in late 2024 at the earliest. Through it, ISRO will study the Venusian atmosphere and the specific composition of this scorching, rocky world. Other agencies have been to Venus before, and many have failed. So could ISRO buck the trend again? Shukriyan 1 will be able to carry 100 kg and around 16 Indian. Number 2. ISRO is building its own space base. The International Space Station is perhaps one of humankind's greatest ever achievements. Agreed. But with rumors that the ISS could soon be decommissioned, the landscape in near-Earth orbit is changing. ISRO actually isn't involved with the ISS program, and there's never been an Indian astronaut on board. But there are plans for ISRO to build its own station starting in the 2030s. A brief outline was announced in 2019 by the then ISRO chair, K. Sivan. As a long-term plan, we are planning to have the space station by India, our own space station. If plans go ahead, then India's space station will weigh around 20 tons to start with, and will be able to host up to three people for up to 20 days at a time. With reports that we're also on the brink of private space stations too, it really is all change up there. Orbital Reef is a full-fledged commercial space station. Before we continue, Dope. be sure to subscribe <laughs> to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option How to much can I get there for? Occasional videos or <laughs> 100 bucks? If you're on your phone, probably 100 sure bucks, you right? Go into your settings and switch on Can't be more than 200. No. Number one, the Vyomanauts are coming. Of course, before that space-based dream can be realized, ISRO needs a human presence in space. Mm. All of its great successes so far have been uncrewed, remotely controlled probes and landers. But that will change with Gaganyaan, the key vehicle in the Indian Human Spaceflight Program. This mission will launch from the Sri Harikota spaceport in Andhra Pradesh. It will carry a three-man team of Vyomanauts while the schedule was initially delayed due to the pandemic, ISRO does have a clear pathway to getting people into orbit. Gaganyaan 1 in 2024 will be an uncrewed test flight. Gaganyaan 2, again in 2024, will carry a humanoid robot. Gaganyaan 3, tabled for 2025, will carry three crew members. The manned mission will take place. Our current schedule is end of 24 or early 25. It will be the first time that ISRO has ever sent humans into space. And those pioneers will be known as Vyomanauts, not Vyomanauts. astronauts, with Vyoma being the Sanskrit word for sky. It is intended to send three astronauts to space for a minimum of seven days. Did you enjoy this video? Very, very much. Very remote. informative. Really informative. Good. Some stuff we knew. Yeah. Some stuff we didn't know. Um, which is always good to learn about. Um, and, and I just read yesterday of the moon mission everything has been going according to plan. Great. The rover was just able to uh, send back surface temperature of the, the lunar surface, mm -hmm. and it was a lot warmer than they were expecting. They were expecting it to be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, it is summer. Yeah. 
It is summer. So that's that's 70 degrees Celsius. It's it's a it's a the lunar surface is hot. And they were also able to do a, another lift off and landing about 30 meters away, mm-hmm. which is critical for having things go and leave, go and leave and go to another location. So, and that literally every single thing they have wanted to attempt thus far has been flawless. That's great. So incredible. Congratulations. Um, I have a feeling we're going to be having a lot of space news from every country here in the next 10 years. It's we're just in another space race, if you will. Yeah, but it's, and it seems to be, and I hope it, is and remains to be the kind of space race that Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about in the video we saw of him, where it's the collective scientific community going out together and wanting to learn from one another. And it isn't about egos or countries I think fighting the, and vying for... I uh, think amongst regular people, it is. And scientists, it definitely is. The scientific community, I don't think, really cares. They're just like, this is science, so I want to know. Yeah. Um, amongst governments, it will be, but, you know, politicians fucking suck, so... Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. just kind of who they are. Um, but uh, amongst regular people and scientists, I feel like it, it's just like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> like, it sucked. Russia it, it crashed, uh, and that sucks. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> all the work that goes into that. Yeah. Uh, not because I care about the Russian government, because, like, those scientists worked years. Yeah. Years on this project. And, and now it's they have to start all But over. it is but it is exactly what they're so accustomed to it and and Tyson marked on this as well he said that there's you know every failure is an opportunity to learn exactly. and to not make a second mistake and the margins for error we we can't even begin to comprehend it I know it's I don't mean this as a pun it's astronomical Oh it is absolutely Yeah the margins for error are and some of my some of my favorite movies are the ones that can depict the brilliance of it like an Apollo 13 yep. or uh what was the one Oh, I can see the poster for it that had it was about the the ladies that were the first black women to be pioneers in space exploration at NASA. Yeah. Kevin Costner was the head of NASA. Yeah. Um, um, it was called. Um, it wasn't accurate. I could see was... the four ladies walking in the poster, but that if if you know, just look up. It's a space movie with Kevin Costner and 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 the four black ladies that were pioneers. Was <sighs> it's a very very good movie. And it, it, part of what makes it so great is it depicts just how, especially in Apollo 13, the room for error is negligible because there's mathematical absolutes that are unapologetic as to your miscalculations. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, that was great. Uh, if there's any other information we need to know, uh, please let us know in any other videos we can react to down below. Just-